The Empty Room by Wanderer D. Chapter 13 The Eclipse cast dark shadows and light. A red hue came to sky in eerie quality that made every pony nervous. Although most players could see just fine in the gloomy ambiance, the authorities in Carolot had decided to light the torches in an attempt to tear up the citizens. The sound of trumpets in Canterlot Plaza drew the attention of all ponies around. A tan earth pony with an open scroll as a cutie mark stepped forth between the trumpeters. Hilly, <laughs> hilly, humble to stay. Queen Nightmare Flare has to kill the old males of ages 20 to 22 in the city or to assemble at the castle. Compliance is mandatory. Failure to attend will result in immediate action by the guards, followed by arrest and imprisonment. Posters will be posted up for your perusal. If you have family members that fall into this category, have them go to the castle gates for further instructions. As of now, all males that belong in the ace group, please gather around here. You will be taken to the castle. Please step back and turn around, leaving the other ponies in his wake. In a few seconds, the crowd became a buzz with concern. What do you think that was about? Bon Bon asked Lyra as he watched one of the guards put up a poster. Lyra shook her head. I don't know. Why would the prince, I mean, the queen do that? And only for mares? And for every mare in Cantala in our age range? It doesn't make any sense at all. There's at least a couple of thousand mares who fall in that group. Ladies! A voice next to them made him jump. A car looking past him as he indicated that they should move to the center of the plaza, along with the other mares that were being herded by the guards. Training nervous glances, the two acquiesced and tried to join the other mares. Maybe I'll find something useful. Baba bit her lower lip and looked at her worriedly, but kept quiet. Yes, he. How could you? Peepie Pie asked. Rainbow Dash scratched the floor of the hoof, not looking up. Thoughts of turmoil. How could she convince them that Nightmare Moon was not the enemy? Some element of loyalty you are. Verity sniffed, looking at her angrily. For sight of trouble, and you joined the leading team. Is that it? No! Rainbow Dash looked up angrily, offended and hurt. She left stairs for Verity. That's not how it is! But, well, you are dressed as a shadow bolt. Flutterside so said, I mean, last time you almost joined them. Rainbow Dash sighed and looked up at Nightmare Moon for help. The Mayor Moon simply raised her eyebrows, simply asking, You're kidding, right? Look, Nightmare Moon is not the bad guy here. Rainbow Dash sighed. Well, I say myself, not the uh. Rainbow Dash erupted, ignoring the Alcard's look. The fact is, we all know her to be evil. It's what eternal nights does so that the ponies can look into her stars and love her. Oh, oh, and there's also the evil I have, dragon eyes, gloomy aura of burning, and he, he'll clear this is hearing me right now, Pinkie Pie added. Rainbow Dash looked up at the black alcorn, who was back there. There was something in those eyes, true, but it was not hatred. The Pegasus sighed. <sighs> Look, listen to me, things are pretty bad down there. D down there? First I asked, where are we? I mean, if you want to tell me, that's okay. Rainbow Dash's smile was sicky. Um, in the moon? What? Pinkie Pie said, you're in the moon? It's so awesome, I want to go out! I would not recommend it, Nightmare Moon said. There's no air out there, and the temperature changes are extreme. You would all die almost immediately, although it would be extremely painful. That's not Pinkie Pie's moment for a bit. Rainbow Dash. Rarity looked at the faces stiffly. You better cut off of an explanation, dear, or you will be in a lot of trouble. Fine! The face aside. <sighs> Look, the fact that you three are alive and relatively free, and I'm not murdering psychopaths thanks to her. She saved you, and she saved me. What do you mean? Rarity asked a bit more softly when she saw Fred trouble. Spitfire. She gave me this medallion. It twisted everything inside my mind. So it down. I... Killed a guard because of it. The three friends recoiled from her as he was a poisonous snake. Now, Nightmare Moon said, That is not there, Rainbow Das. You have no control over that. And even when you brought the guard down, you did not know that Twilight was going to execute them under Nightmare Flare's orders. But, Rainbow Das's eyes wired, I, but, I could have stopped it in. 
The three friends watched the bases that were moved, right to sovereign paces with a swing. You were corrected immediately. Even with the medallion's influence, and that triggered your element to set you free. The yeah, Alcorn said soothingly. We were just didn't look up. But not a week later, Tulsi felt another wing drip across her shoulders. And the hose of her three friends as they hugged her. It's okay, Darcy. Pinkie Pie whispered. I'm sorry you had to go through that alone, darling. We already said, tears in her eyes. We're here for you. Where's I added? Slowly, Nightmare Moon stepped back, leaving her friends there together. Her attention was complete. The four elements would stand by her side. That left only the element of icy and Twilight Spark. She turned around to give Rainbow Dance and her friends the privacy to talk. But she had only taken two steps when the side of Pegasus' voice floated up to her. Please, stay with us, Luna. Nightmare Moon didn't look back. Although she could feel the eyes of all four mares on her, she remained still for a few seconds longer before turning to face them. I am not Mammu, she said with a cynical smile. I am a dictator, a powerful being that would go any lengths to achieve her goal. Don't call me Luna. But she stayed as the friends talked to comfort each other. They didn't notice when the Alcorn looked up at the question of surprise. A small smile appearing on her face. You're welcome, Scootaloo, she whispered. Are you soldiers of the good Adley of Scootaloo? Apple Bloom asked for what felt like the seventeenth time. Yes! It just feels so weird, Sweet Bell said, looking up at the red and black sky. You think that the whole world's like your free forest. The three friends wanted silence. They had left Ponyville three hours ago. Without their sisters, Apple Bloom and Sweet Bell had no pony to stop them from gathering their crusader clubs, apples, and leaving. Scootaloo found out her mother had been one of the many pig sides chasing after Rainbow Dash, and thus was unconscious in the hospital. The doctor asserted that her mother was otherwise fine, as were all the pig sides that had the misfortune of encountering a Sonic Rainbow head on. Scootaloo found herself in the unusual position of thanking Nightmare Moon of catching her mother, saving her from her idol. She looked up at the moon. Thank you for catching my mom and all the Pegasi this morning, Nightmare Moon. She gradually acknowledged the dark deity. You're welcome, Skittadoo. She had this weirdest feeling that the moon replied to her somehow, but kept it to herself. It probably wouldn't do for the others to know she prayed to Nightmare Moon of all ponies. And the fact that she was pretty sure she got an answer. She closed the sleeve bell, who despite trudging along loyally, had a look of worry on her face. Her eyebrows looked down to a small frown. For the most part, the trip had been quiet, lost in her thoughts. It made Skulu wonder. Does how the hate this sleep bell no Nightmare Moon's minion? She had to stop interrogating her friend. Not that she enjoyed it. Sweet Bell had seemed to be really suffering through the questions. The unicorn really clearly wanted to tell them, but couldn't. And that just made it worse. Apple Blue was clearly worried about her sister and brother. When she had gone home to gather her things, only Gray Smith and Caramel Apple had been around. She had found out that Big Magatos had left the night before and had yet to return. It was difficult to not know. At least she knew her mom was okay, and that she would wake up soon. But Sweet Bell and Apple Blue didn't know where their families were. She felt very guilty about interrogating her friend. The little unicorn must be working to about her sister, too. She sighed. Why were things getting so complicated? I can see the castle! The unicorn suddenly piped in. Scooby sat down her thoughts and looked towards the mountainside. Yes, there it was in all its glory. Waterfalls and all, Canterlot Castle. The Pegasus smiled, dark farts forgotten. Well done, Crusaders! We're almost there! Applejack's ear twitched. There was a sound, but... There wasn't again. A door? Opening? Her eyes slowly opened as she stared complete confusion at the mattress and pillows piled around her. Well, Memories had started to flood in. Nightmare Moon, Nightmare Flare, Rainbow Dash, Twilight Spark. She tried to stand up, but her body seemed so heavy. She was probably so tired, even if it was in the afternoon if the light from the window was hanging in the kitchen. She heard a gasp. What happened here? Voice she didn't recognize asked. She pushed the pillow aside and stared at the maid that had walked into the room. 
Unicorn stared back at her. Don't I ask you, Apple uh, Super Cube? Applejack finally said. You will really don't want to know. Oh. Unicorn seemed to think about it. Lady Applejack. Airplane snoring. <laughs> don't call me lady, please. She shook her head. Trust me. There's nothing lady like about me. I'm like you. A hard worker trying to earn an honest living. She so finally felt strong enough to stand up and did so. I'll be in a bit secretly. Unicorn smiled. Miss Apple. Lady Twilight has requested your presence for a late lunch with her and some friends. Applejack noticed that the smile slip once he had said the purple unicorn's name. It was understandable. Did something hit her? Lunch? She blinked. But is it late out the lamp? Unicorn grimaced and shook her head. Applejack waited her way to the window looked out. Then she remembered. The globe came from the eclipse that Nightmare Moon had caused. She sighed. <sighs> How long was I asleep? Unicorn thought with thoughtful. I believe you saw Lady Spark around six hours ago. Oh. No wonder she still felt tired. But now that she was up, she was not falling asleep anytime soon. That's how she worked. She sometimes envied Rainbow Dash for her ability to take naps anytime. Her thoughts about the Pegasus soon turned dark as she remembered her conversation outside the door in her betrayal. Lady, I mean, Miss Apple. Unicorn prodded. She looked down sheepishly. I would appreciate it if you would join Lady Twilight. She was very graphic about what would happen to me if you were late. I didn't understand half the words, but it sounded, she blushed, intense. I was next to her. Oh, you poor girl, she sighed. Fine, I'll join her, but I'll leave us out first. The maid smiled. Thank you. No, Lady Sucker Cream, Applejack said, stretching her legs. They felt sore. I know what it's like to be on the other end of her creativity, <laughs> she said. I've kept her alive so far. We're gonna like do it again. She so made it more sure herself than she actually was. Unicorn nodded and used her magic to set up the bath for the Earth Pony. Once it was ready, she excused herself and went on to presumably talk to Twilight Spark. Fortunately, she was not disturbed by any pony while she relaxed in the bath. Although her muscles began to relax, her mind was working full time. She so sealed her fate by promising to go have dinner with Twilight. But maybe, just maybe, the fact that the purple unicorn was willing to let her relax and was being less aggressive was a good sign. Maybe Twilight had stopped to think about what she had told her. Maybe she had regained her senses. Applejack sighed. Too many maybes. But Twilight was her friend, and Rainbow Dash was too. The only way to figure out what had happened to them and bring them back to normal would be to feed with them and find out. She eventually, and regretfully, got out of the hot bath and dried herself with the towels that had survived Twilight's Brisk Creek from earlier that day. When she was ready, she opened the door and looked outside. A guard pony stood and passively waved for her. When he, he nodded when he saw her. This way, Miss Apple. Apparently, the unicorn had passed the word. Good. See, the most ponies here knew that she was not part of Twilight Sparks' entourage, despite the unicorns insisted on being with her. She followed the guard's sons as they made their way down to the palace, where she would meet with Twilight. She took advantage to gauge how every pony was taking the whole nightmare moon slash flare thing. Fear. That's what she saw in the ponies around her. Fear. Confusion. They watched like they were stepping on eggshells. The castle staff performed their jobs regardless. Guards more tense even if possible. But then again, she had a chance to meet some of them in a less formal situation, like yesterday. Had it really only been a day and a half? She shuddered. It felt like a lifetime. The whole situation was overwhelming, to say the least. The ponies would look at her worriedly, possibly wondering if she, like Rainbow Jess, was an agent of Nightmare Moon or Flair. Someone even risked small encouraging smiles if they somehow recognized her. But overall, the long walk did nothing to appease her. When they arrived at her destination, she looked uncomfortably at the double doors. She could hear several voices behind them. Even last, twice Sparks' unmistakable chuckles prominent among them. We're here, the guard said unnecessarily. I was like not a gulp. When she took a step forward, the guard touched her shoulder to make her look at him. Good luck. He let her go. You're probably not, and walked into the room. The first thing that caught her attention was the table. 
It was full of food, and she was noisily reminded by her stomach that she hadn't eaten a bite since the day before. Hey, it's Applejack! The farmer blinked. Spack? Weren't you a pony fail? Nah, Twilight totally patched me into her salad bags and forgot I was there. It's happened before. Applejack shook her head, looked at the air ponies in her room. Twilight Spark was giving her a very intense look. The farmer blushed when the unicorn licked her lips and quickly looked at the other ponies. When she saw Rainbow Dash dressed in a shadow bolt uniform, she felt her heart break. A shadow bolt, Dias? She whispered. Rainbow Dash looked at her, and something crossed her eyes. By a fleeting moment, she seemed pained. But the look was gone in less than a second, and the pace is nodded. There was no smile, boasting or gloating. It was surreal. This could not be her friend. Nightmare Moon asked her to be a sound bolt captain, and we, she agreed, Spitfire said, drawing the farmer's attention to her. The Wonderbolt smiled at the rainbow main Pegasus and touched her huff. We're all proud of her. Oh, boy, it. Applesack's reply was dry. Her eyes were drawn to the last point in the room, who was studiously not looking at her. Applesack took a step back. Those eyes. That green mane. The uniform with the dagger cutie mark on the flank. Died? All conversation died at the table, as the two mares stared at each other. Jade, as your eyes, looked down away quickly, then returned to look straight at Applejack. While slightly glazed in her head, she nodded. You two know each other? Well, yeah, yeah. The airplane confirmed. So I saved my life about four years ago. She was on her way somewhere for a poor mission. I was currently calling for help when I was trapped in a collapsed breeze. But what in the name of all apples are you doing here? Applejack asked, her tone desperate. Did they capsule you? She looked down. She saw her host came up. Stewie saw most his company by clops and taps. She used the team on the floor to communicate. He was wasn't sure what to do, since none of them knew any hoof language. He just traded awkward looks. You know, in all my years, I think this is the only time we've ever done a uh, sign language in a fic. Hm. Well, y'all mind you stole not my moon! Applejack growled and walked up to the deadly assassin. You can't! Tap, tap, clap, tap. Hoof to the chest, clap, slip most across the neck. I'll know you're an assassin. Applejack said, frown. Tap, clap, hoof movements, clap, clap, tap. Head shake, shrug. I expect you to say no! Leave me your assassin. This is not my moon we're talking about. She's a ruthless, merciless killer that'll betray you on the first chance. Hey, you take that back! Rainbow Dash cried, standing up. Hey, your moon is nothing like that! I would say that, traitor. Applejack said, snapped. What did you call me? Rainbow Dash growled silly in Applejack's face. I called you a traitor. That's what ponies like you who betrayed your friends and everyone that trusts them are called. Applejack said, I don't know what your problem is, Rainbow Dash, but if you think I can remain friends with murderers and betrayers, you got another thing coming. Fix was about to punch Applejack. But she felt silent day and said to her shoulder. Looking back at the assassin, she grinned her teeth as the green mane unicorn shook her head. Well, bugging down already? The farmer taunted, fearing us clear in every syllable. Flakers that good for nothing lazy cow like you will be the one to join the part pony that killed her best friends. The hurting of Dash's eyes was almost enough to make her regret her words. But all it took was a look at the uniform the Pegasus was wearing for her contempt and hatred to boil again. She watched as Rainbow Dash turned away from her, and walked out of the room, slamming the door behind her. Dash! Spitfire quickly galloped past her, also leaving the room. Oh dear, Twilight Spark sighed. She didn't even value her servants. Grab a play, Applejack. Tell us how your day went. He Who did Nightmare Moon kill? Spike gasped, ignoring Twilight and looking at Applejack. Looking at the baby dragon. The earth pony fell a huge weight on her shoulders as she took a deep breath and told him. There were probably 500 ponies in the room, all mares. While this might have been a paradise for someone with Lyra's disposition, it actually felt like hell. She was trapped. Not only that, but her grand plan of getting information would not work at all. Um, Nightmare Flare, quick question. I mean, I know this is a plan to find your daughter and all, but... 
what if your daughter had dysphoria? And suddenly went under a gender change spell. It's been known to happen, you know. They all been gathered in a large two-leveled room. Above there was an empty balcony. Several columns decorated the room. Although there were at least three doors in the room, all of them were blocked by guards. They all had to sign documents with their information on them. They told that once they were done here, they would be called for again. There had been a slight disturbance earlier when a couple of Pegasi had been unceremoniously thrown into a room. They argued with the guards and attempted to get out, but to no avail. The Pegasus guards stood their tents on the balcony. Whenever a Pegasus would fly up, they would carry them down. All the mares were nervous. Discussions and arguments sprung out constantly. Myra! Myra! A voice called Mayor Cringe. She looked towards the approaching unicorn with dread. Good at heart! She forced a smile. The other unicorn made her way to Lyra, doing her face to avoid touching any pony. Can you believe it? We have to share a room with this rabble. She sniffed. Nobles do not mix with. She glared in contempt at the ponies around her. Commoners! Lyra lowered her head. Beside her, she could feel Bon Bon seething in anger. I don't think this is the best time to complain about that, Glitterhorn. I suppose you're right, Unicorn sighed. Nothing to be done, she leaned forward. Did you see what Twilight Sparkle did this morning? Lara looked nervously, looking at Bon Bon. Glitterhorn and raised Arts and Eyebrow at the Earth Point, decided to ignore her. I never thought she had it in her, Glitterhorn frowned. I heard some of those ridiculous claims that she defeated Ursa Minor with her magic. It's true, Bon Bon interrupted. What? I, um, we were there. Oh, Glitterhorn blinked. Well, regardless of that, I never thought she would punish the pony so thoroughly. She laid in. I heard that they were looking for more rebels. All right, Bon Bon exchanged glances. We since was all right paranoid, but Bon Bon looked downright terrified. Unicorn gave her lover a hesitant smile. You see those two pigs right there? With those gods? Glitterhorn continued, interrupting the exchange. The couple looked. The pretentious unicorn was talking about the Pegasi pair from earlier. She hadn't noticed he had an escort. They're both Wendabots, Glitterhorn said. Since none of the others attacked Nightmare Moon, they've been under suspicion and all out of the house arrest. Isn't that about as much? was for Lyra, thinking of Soren. Just because one of them did that doesn't mean all of them are like that. Oh no, dear. Glitterhorn shook her head. They have it easy. If you suspect of someone being a rebel and don't inform the god, you could be thrown into dungeon along with family and friends. Each word made Bon Bon cringe. I, if you consort with the rebels, it stands to reason your cult of the equations might too. I have heard of entire families being thrown into the dungeon, even killed. Your pony gasped. Lyra shook her head. I don't believe it. It's too much. Are you sure you're not exaggerating? Her heart shook her head. I heard it from my daddy, who heard it from a friend of Minty Top, who's dating Sharp Drop, who's in a guard. Lyra pointed. Oh. Oh, is that sparkling crown? I must talk to her. Ta! The overwhelmed musician watched the pretentious unicorn walk away, calling her a friend. She felt a cold sweat through the conversation and couldn't stop scratching at the floor nervously. Deep breaths, deep breaths, she intoned herself. Everything will be fine. No pony knows. When her heart stopped beating four times as fast as normal, she finally turned around. That was pretty crazy, don't you think, Bon Bon? She looked around, but her family friend was not there. Bon Bon? She looked warily. Where has she gone? Mills of Continent! A voice from the balcony called, drying all the hits in the air. When the herald stepped up, I am honored to announce Queen Nightmare Flare! Every pony in the room bowed as the Dark Queen entered the balcony, followed by several guards. My faithful subjects, the Queen said, looking down at the mares below her. Thank you for coming out here today. I will not take too much more of your time. Although you don't know the reason you are here today, know that you are providing an important duty. Now, let us begin. The horn started slowly building up a energy. Each pulse of magic made a glow briar. Each unicorn felt their horn react. 
Each pig's eye felt their wings tingle, and each their body felt their hearts beat harder. After a few seconds, the glow dismissed, and Nightmare Flare shook her head. You are free to go. There's an audible relief sigh from the gathered group as the door started to open. But Lyra noticed that a guard had walked up to the queen and whispered something to her ear. Stop! The doors immediately closed, and the gathered ponies looked up at the queen in confusion. Something has been brought to my attention, Nightmare Flare said, voice gaining an angry tone. A bony here has been conspiring against the unquestionable rule of myself and my sister. She says she approached the edge of the balcony and glared down at the ponies. A traitor! A rebel! She spat. Lara felt two hosts hold her roughly by the shoulders. She looked at the guards inside of her in horror. For a very of her vision, she caught a glance at Garrett Horn, melodramatically fainting. Well, today's demonstration was not clear enough, Nightmare Flare said as her eyes bored to Lyra's. However, I'm not without mercy. If you confess the names of your fellow rebels, I will grant you a pardon, and have you in house arrest until they are de detained. This is your one chance, Lyra. Lyra's world's crumbling around her. Hi, how? Who could have known? The only pony that knew was... Her eyes scanned the crown they settled a bonbon. It was flanked by two guards. The other pony couldn't meet her gaze. The assistant unicorn felt her heart crumbling. Tears fell on heat to the floor as she stared at her lover. Well, Nightmare Air prodded. Your answer? She felt cold, like this was happening to some pony else. Her head slowly turned towards the dark monarch. She couldn't see the Princess Celestia she knew in there. The princess and her friends and fellow rebels, rebels were trying to bring back. Your Majesty, I will never betray the rightful ruler to this land. She spoke up, making Nightmare Flare smile, and Bon Bon looked up hopefully. Therefore, I will keep quiet so that both Princess Celestia and Princess Luna can be reinstated. Bon Bon peeled and tried to walk to her, for her mouth to see something, but the guards stopped her. Not only that... Lyra shouted amongst the gas and murmurs for the crowd. But well, I can tell you right now, Nightmare Flare, that you will never stop our rebel alliance, no matter how much power you have. She so went towards Bon Bon, eyes meeting, all the hurt and fear in her eyes, making the earth point cringe and look down at guilt. Or how many traitors or betrayers you surround yourself with. Bon Bon tore herself free in the guards and hugged Lyra. Lyra, please, tell them, please. Why? Lyra whispered. Are you part of the council? What? Council? No. Bon Bon whispered back. Sometimes he looked Lyra in the eyes. I can't risk my family, Lyra. My sister, my mom, and dad. They all would have been captured with me if I hadn't reported you. What about your friends in Plainfield? Do you want them tortured or killed? But you still have a chance. Don't waste your life. What about dreaming of performing for the prince, the queens? If anything, the answer to that made it hurt worse. Bon Bon was not being controlled. A laugh made their way towards him. <laughs> your family, your friends, Nick Moon chuckled. You've been listening to Gossip Little Pony. I'm not a monster. If someone was found to be a rebel in their family, you would naturally be asked some questions. But unless they were guilty, they would not be thrown into dungeon, much less killed. Bon Bon's heart almost stopped. All color drained from her face. Her host fell to the side no longer having the strength to keep them up, as he realized what she'd done in the spur of the moment. Lyra closed her eyes as the guards removed the limp pony. Very well, Lyra. Nightmare Flare spoke up again. You leave me no choice. I will cross your rebel alliance, for you will not live to see it. She reared her head up. You shall be executed tomorrow at dawn. Two guards took hold of Lyra, who did not struggle. With smirk of satisfaction, Nightmare Flare turned around, but stopped when she heard a unicorn's voice float up to the completely silent room. How? Nightmare frowned. How are you going to be executed? No. Lyra looked up with an unusual smile on her face. How will you tell the time? You see, there's been a moon stuck in front of the sun since, at noontime since dawn today. Nightmare Flare roared as her horn turned with magic. There's a crack in the air, there's this place, and Lyra was sent flying back to crash against the wall. Heal her! She ordered as the guards rushed up to the battery and unconscious unicorn. It would not do for her to be at her best on her last day in Equestria. The corner of the room 
watching everything in horror from behind a guard. Blah Bun sank to her knees, eyes never straying from Lyra's form as she was picked up and carried out. What have I done? 